Okay, so the next step is to put our center drill in the chuck and then we're going to line up to the holes and we're going to center drill all of the hole locations. Now when I load up a drill, a straight shank drill and a chuck, what I want to do is um, only be engaging the straight section of the drill body, the drill shank with the jaws. I wouldn't want to stick this center drill up any deeper and have my, my clamping teeth actually going into the flute area. Like I mentioned before on our drill sharpening video, I want to hold the, the drill chuck wrench in my hand like this and do a prying action like so to tighten my chuck. It's a lot easier and I'm a lot stronger than rotating my wrist. I want to pivot. It's a lot better. Of course, I'll have to unlock all my clamps so I can float the drill around. And I'm going to line up using the, the tip of my my center drill, it's, uh, it's going to be an acceptable level of accuracy for this part. If I were very, very concerned, I could line up with a, a little centering tool that we actually will use on this project, but um, our center punch mark is pretty small and the tip of the drill bit will more or less lock itself in um, perfectly. So, With this light duty machine, you can tell even if I'm off a little bit too much when I push down at the spindle you probably saw the actual drill center itself to the hole now I am still pushing down against the plate I'm maintaining pressure while I tighten my locks if I let go of the spindle and then I start tightening my locks and the drill wanders off location well then I have to redo it again or I'll end up drilling a hole in the wrong spot. A little bit of cutting oil, you don't need a lot. And the RPM, we're gonna talk about the RPM selection in better in greater detail when we actually put a drill bit in the spindle. But for right now, um, we're gonna be drilling to where we're about halfway up this tapered section here and if I measured um, you know the diameter there and then I ran through my calculations I'm gonna end up at about 800 or a thousand so I, I just tell my students that if you have a center drill and you're in mild still if you go somewhere around a thousand rpms things are gonna work out okay Often, students break the center drills because they are going too slow. And what happens is they don't realize how much force they're feeding downward into their part with a slow rotation speed, and then that smaller tip breaks off. So I'll adjust my gearbox. Now when I turn on the spindle, I want to turn it on and off and make sure that it was rotating the correct direction. Some machines, depending on the gears that you've selected, it can change the rotation of the spindle and you'll actually have to turn the, the on off switch um, the opposite way that you have been. So don't assume that when you flip the lever on any machine that it's going to be going the right way. Actually verify the spindle rotation is correct by turning it on and off and, and just checking it. 
It's a good habit to build. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to gently touch, and then I'm going to apply more feeding force. So right there, I can see I'm starting to form the, the cone. And then I went a little bit deeper, and, and I'm happy with that. And the cone, what I'm going to use is just a towel to, to wipe away some of these chips, not my fingers. The, the cone that I'm referring to is from this, this included angle right here of 60 degrees, um, and it's been formed in the surface of the plate. Use a brush or a towel to wipe away chips, not your hands. All right, so there we go. And I'm just gonna move around to the next locations until I have features that are a similar um, depth and size to that one. This isn't a hypercritical uh, operation right here. Notice, I continued to press down against the part while I set my locks. When I pump, when I pull the oil brush out of the oil, I like to shove against the side to remove most of the oil, and that helps me not make a huge puddle on my part. <laughs> 